All right, well, welcome back to another episode of the Create the Ripple podcast. I am your host, Candace Smiley. And here we talk about trusting the niggle and telling the truth. Now, today's podcast will not be wandering into the religious or the political, but I can and need to warn you that this is, could be a trigger for some, because today I'm going to be talking about women's rights with quite a bit of leaning toward, um, well, I'll just put it this way. The 49th anniversary of the Supreme Court's decision with Roe versus Wade it just happened on the 22nd. So at the time of recording, it was yesterday. Now, this was actually done in 1973. So yes, we're going to be talking today about women's rights. We're going to be talking about abortion. And I'm not, again, going to be wandering into the religious or the political. So regardless of what you believe about either of these things, I'm asking you to park those beliefs and just stick with me for a minute because there is some things that I just need to say. So after years of feeling like my voice was locked down, feeling like because I didn't speak up in the sexual assault that happened when I was 17. Um, I feel like I have a lot to say, and I know that this is a really touchy subject. And so I've been hesitant on, on jumping into it and certainly spent some time thinking about it. However, I feel like it's important to talk about these issues. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Create the Ripple podcast. I'm your host, Candace Smiley here. We trust the Ningle and we tell the truth. This is a podcast. We are looking to have conversations that matter, conversations that take courage to engage in, where we cut through the noise, the noise that exists online to bring you incredible content, amazing speakers and stories to inspire you to live your best, listen to yourself and tell the truth of who you are and who you just might become. Hey, I wanted to talk to you a minute today about the gig economy. What is the gig economy? It's basically the side hustle, side income economy that's become so popular today and age. I hope you're still listening to this ad because it's really important for me. I was in the network marketing industry for over 13 years and I had an incredible experience. I learned a ton of things, but there were many things about the industry of network marketing that I really didn't love one of which was the overinflated products. Number two was the fact that I had to build a team or balance those things that we would call legs, you know, the whole pyramid thing. I really was done with that. About a year ago, I was introduced to a social retail company. Social retail simply means that we are using our social media platforms, which are free, by the way, to promote products and services that we love. The affiliate marketing is booming, not even going to lie. It's an incredible place to be in. And I'm speaking to the woman who's in her 30s or maybe in her 40s, and she'd like to create that extra income. She'd like to create income on her own time. And she'd like to do it in a company that isn't all about the hype, that has some real products that she can get behind and would work with somebody who wants to teach her how to do that. If that's you, then I would really love it if you would reach out to me. Feel free to comment below or leave me an email scan the code. I'm sure there's a code somewhere if you're watching on my YouTube channel, but I would love to get in touch with you. And this is why the company that I'm with, modere.com or modere.ca, depending on where you're at, check out shiftingretail.com. So that's shiftingretail.com. You, I want you specifically to go check out the values of this company and what their mission is. That was really important for me. I got flown down to the corporate offices and I had a chance to meet with the corporate crew and meet with the visionaries that are really driving the company forward. And what I discovered is this. The first thing they said to me was, Candice, when people come here from a network marketing company, they start making money. Now, disclaimer, this is work. This is going to take work. This is going to take energy, effort, time, and skill. It's not a get rich kid scheme. Those don't exist. At least not ones that I would like to put my name behind. However, this company pays us 10 to 36% on commissions of whatever we've moved within our business. And we get paid daily. We get paid up to twice daily. Biggest, coolest thing about this. If I move product, I get paid on the product, period. No balancing legs, no having to do any of that stuff. If product moves because of a referral that I did, whether it was through my social media, through a swipe up influencer or a person to person conversation, doesn't matter. 
I'm going to get paid on it. And for me, being paid on the work and the effort that I do is important. So if this is something that's intriguing to you, I invite you to head over to shiftingretail.com or head over to C Smiley, that's C S M I L E Y dot shiftingretail.com, and you'll be able to join my team directly. If you've got some more questions, please comment below or find a way to contact me and get in touch because I would love to share with you how we're building this and how affiliate marketing is the place for you to be. And trust me, once I show you how to do it with this company, I will show you the numerous, many companies, brick and mortar stores, you name it, sole proprietors, entrepreneurs who have an affiliate based idea. And once you can do it with one company, you can do it with any of them. So I'm excited to teach you that. In fact, so excited. We're going to give you 120 days of done for you posts or texts that will help you so that you don't have to worry about what to post or when to post or how to post it. We're going to give all of that to you. You just got to show up with drive, determination, and some cash flow to get you started. $39.99 gets you your affiliate link and code and gets ready to start. Maybe you want to try some product too. It's awesome. But up to two customer orders actually qualifies for you for commission. So you don't even have to place an order provided you've got customer orders that are moving in your business. Brand new customer orders qualify you for commissions every month. Super cool. Definitely an opportunity for somebody who wants to come in, put some effort in and work, work with integrity, work with honesty, but really begin to use the social media time that right now is really just wasted time and turn that into cash flow. Awesome. Hope you have a wonderful day and keep enjoying our show. All right. Well, welcome back to another episode of the Create the Purple podcast. I am your host, Candace Smiley. And here we talk about trusting the niggle and telling the truth. Now today, today I need to give you a heads up, ladies, um, with a trigger warning, this might be triggering for some, we're going to be talking today about Roe versus Wade. So we will be talking about abortion, sexual assault, and some of these other very difficult and challenging uh, topics. I'm going to not wander into the religious or the political here. So I'm asking for you to show up regardless of your personal beliefs to listen. I'm going to do my best to try not to insert my own opinions or thoughts or beliefs into it, but rather go and look at this from a much larger uh, bird's eye view per se. I feel like after years of having my voice silenced, um, locked down, um, muted, um, I feel like I have a lot to say, and I feel like right now there's a definite rise of the feminine. We have been doing a lot in the last few years, ladies, to step up and speak up and speak up for ourselves, but I'm reminded on the regular, actually, since I did the deep healing work in 2020 to realign and reconnect with my feminine after years of living in my masculine. So, caveat, if you are new to the show um, my bio is, it will be in the show notes. You're welcome to scroll down, take a quick read. But basically 20 something years ago, I was sexually assaulted by my boyfriend and I didn't say anything to stop him from doing those things because I had been gaslit, even though I did not know that was a term at the time I had been manipulated into thinking that he had needs and I needed to uh, respond to them regardless of how uncomfortable I felt. And I had never been empowered with the words to say when something like this happened. And so I was questioning my own sanity. <laughs> I was questioning um, because he told me he loved me. Anyway, I don't want to go too far into that, but here's here's the deal. I didn't say anything because I didn't want to make him uncomfortable. And oftentimes I haven't said things in my life. If you look through my story, whether it was being left with $350,000 worth of debt, whether it was um, going through my own Me Too movement a number of years ago, I didn't say things because I didn't want to make someone uncomfortable and I was hella uncomfortable, let me tell you. So as I wade into this conversation about Roe versus Wade, um, and if you are unfamiliar with that landmark Supreme Court ruling, there will be a link down below in the show notes for you to go and take a look and take a read for your own self. So again, I do not want to jump into religion. I do not want to jump into the politics around this. Here's what has me thinking about this. So we know, okay, let me go in one step further. I personally believe that life starts at conception. That's my personal belief. Okay, so caveat, I respect you for where whatever you personally believe. For me, that's what I feel. 
Um, and so I always knew when I entered into a sexual relationship with a, a man and there was the potential that I might get pregnant, let's be honest, people, that birth control does not always work um, as effectively as we need it to. I always knew and expressed often to my sexual partners that I would, in fact, carry the fetus to life if I possibly could. Um, and that was always just a personal decision that I had made after considering it. Now that's to be said, I have a ton of respect for people who make a different decision. That being said, it's sort of this going back to that united polarity movement that's happening right now, which is essentially that there is a law of polarity. So I'm not going to go too far into it, but I will post a link to Aubrey Marcus's comments about this whole idea of polarity. So we know there's a law of polarity, which basically means what is up and what is down, right? So everything has an opposite. And I'm wondering if we, especially we as women, can come to a place where we can just respect the other person. I mean, I've talked before on the podcast and certainly on other people's podcasts that sometimes we need to hold our personal values and our beliefs lightly. The reason we must hold them lightly is sometimes they're in conflict with each other. And so how do you stay within your own integrity without bullying someone else into believing what you need to believe or that sort of thing, which is really a very egoic centric thing to do. Just because you allow someone else to believe something different does not mean that you are compromising yourself. At least that's my own personal opinion. So caveat, there's a ton of opinion in this episode, but again, with my podcast, for me, the telling the truth has never been about the truth. Uh, capital T H E, the truth. It's about telling the truth to yourself so that you can listen to your own inner niggle so that you can take some time to think. Because, oh my goodness, most people in my experience, myself included, before I woke up, don't think. We receive information. Um, we don't always check the source. We don't certainly don't always check our own in, intuition and our own gut and check to see what lines up with who we believe ourselves to be. Okay, I digress. So today, I kind of want to talk about this for a few reasons. Um, and I have two children, uh, two beautiful children, and I would love to have some more. And so I think it's an incredible gift that I am able to be pregnant and I have this right to be pregnant. I'm really grateful that I can choose how many children I would like to have. I'm grateful I can choose when I want to have them. I'm grateful that I can uh, you know, I live in a place where it's safe for me to do so. But 49 years ago in 1973, Sarah Weddington and Linda Coffey, uh, Sarah was 27, by the way, and fresh out of law school when they were arguing for Roe versus Wade, which was essentially um, a young woman said that it was unconstitutional. So this is in the U.S., unconstitutional for the government to say whether or not she could or could have an abortion. Now, she was, she was a single woman. Um, and, um, at the time, <laughs> interestingly enough, she was not being hired by law companies because they would not hire women. Now, women, I want you to hang out with me for one minute. So whether you're bees in a bonnet because of what I'm saying about these things, I hope it's not, I hope you're still with me, pull yourself up and out of the space and look at this from a really big perspective. Okay. So we're talking grand world scale. Less than 50 years ago, women were not being hired by law firms. So we've come a long way and we know that this is still the case, but let's be honest. Did you know that women on average in the US, okay, so this is US statistics, earn 78 cents for every dollar earned by men? And this is white women, okay? So the women who have the privilege to the 64 cents that most black women earn for every dollar earned by a white men and 54 cents for Latina women. Now I'm gonna be doing some more talking, so watch out for this if you're listening to the podcast in live time. I'm going to have a very special guest on in February and we're gonna be talking about Black History Month, which is in February. Now I am new to really understanding Black history and the role that um, white women have played in that. And so I'm going to be exploring that with another woman who I know is powerful. We want to engage in a conversation, again, does not bring our views necessarily to the conversation. And we're asking you not to listen from that place, but to listen from a place that you might think because change happens in each of us. Okay, so this woman, Sarah and Linda, they're arguing for the Supreme Court. Now it's interesting here. Um, in 
uh, rather Wade. So Wade is the dude, okay, um, who was the attorney general, I believe it was, uh, or the attorney who was arguing, he actually helped Roe versus Wade make it all the way to the Supreme Court because he made some really inappropriate um, sexist comments um, and said he would continue to basically, you know, push the issue. So basically he was, an, you know, an ass, you know what, um, essentially pushing the thing to the Supreme Court because he was just really out of tune um, in terms of women's rights at the time. Now, that being said, again, this is only 49 years ago. Um, and even now, so in 2021, this is what's scary. Okay. So I just like put my toe in the water on this. And again, this is why I'm asking you to think about this and why I'm sharing this really challenging topic today. There was actually 106 restrictions on abortions that came into law in this in the US in 2021. Now, again, we are continually being divided as women over these kinds of issues. And we're being divided by men. And now guys, you know, I love you. I'm in an incredible relationship with a man right now. I have some incredible friends, guys who I'm certainly would love to wade into this kind of issue with me. But here's what's scary for me in Latin America right now. Okay. So let's pull ourselves out of the U S right. Let's pull ourselves out of the privilege and let's head down to like Latin America for a minute. Women can be sentenced to 30 years in prison for a miscarriage. That's how deep this sort of control goes. So we like to think that we're kind of evolved at this point, but that's really scary for me when an obstetric emergency becomes cause for a man, and let's be honest, it wouldn't be other women putting this woman in prison, um, can sentence a woman to 30 years in prison. One in four, according to the Department of Justice, one in four women who are homeless in the U.S. are homeless because of violence that was committed against her and she has nowhere to go. There is a problem here. Now the Me Too movement kicked in and of course I will you know, post a link to that down there in the comments. But here again, what I'm talking about here is we keep on trying to move the needle forward. We keep on trying to negotiate for rights and the people that say that we're there, I'm sorry, ladies and men, but we're not. Now this is coming from a woman again, who has an incredible relationship with a number uh, you know, great men, my dad I had a ton of respect for my grandpa. I'm in an incredible relationship with a man right now who shows me a ton of respect, but we haven't won the battle yet. And that's what scares me most about the Supreme court now considering whether or not they will overturn Roe versus Wade. It is not about the single issue regarding abortion. It is much bigger than that in terms of what it will mean in terms of a ripple effect, a negative ripple effect to the rights that we have been fighting for for so long. And we know that abuse generally occurs insidiously, which means it's going to creep in slowly. It's going to creep in with small laws that take away a little bit and a little bit and a little bit and a little bit of our right to choose, our right to speak, our right to make decisions. And we have to remember that it's going to have a universal effect. I think we know that now after the last couple of years, we've seen how small the world is. We've seen this. We know that we are, as women are rising, but we have to be doing a better job, I think, of rising together. We have to be doing a better job of being willing to powerfully, compassionately, beautifully, setting aside our difference, holding our values lightly, so not letting go of our own personal integrity and standing in our own power, speaking our truth. And as other women, hearing other women's truths, allowing them to stand there and agreeing yet to stand in this idea of united polarity and standing in this space where I can respect you for who you are and you can respect me, right? Namaste. I see the, the bigness that is in you. You see the bigness in me and in that place, we can come together. Okay. It's interesting to me, this kind of stuff trickles all the way down, right down to the fact that in December of 2021, so very recently, there's a young gal, so she's in high school, she was sexually assaulted by a classmate, and she was suspended because, yes, I'll have a link down below so you can check that out, she was suspended because she broke the school's policies on being sexually active while on school property. So here's my point to all of the stuff that I shared with you before this moment. Where are 
the guys in all of this? Where is the responsibility that's being taken? And this is my number one problem with this whole thing. And this is my plea, my ask, my reach out. We need to be trusting the nickel and we need to be telling the truth. And this is me as much as I possibly can telling the truth as I see it. I have a problem with all of these, not because somebody else has a different view or idea than me, but the fact that the weight of these things, the punishments, the weights of the punishment of these things rest so securely on the women. And the men are the one making the laws. They are the ones driving it home. They're usually conservative Christian men. And I'm not getting into religion. I'm not getting into that here. But the reality is, is there's a certain stereotype that is driving this home. And I have to wonder, and I have to ask, is that an archaic idea and concept and mentality that is going to be having a huge impact on women's safety, on women's rights, on the rights of our children. And it's a problem. It's a problem for me because it takes two to tango, to put it lightly. It takes a guy and a girl in order to create a baby in these ways. We know that. Okay. I hope you're laughing or at least smiling with me or at least paying attention. I hope you're still listening. Where is the responsibility of the guy that got her in the mess? Because I don't see men being thrown into prison because they got a girl pregnant or because they sexually assaulted her and now she's pregnant. In any of these situations, the guy gets off free. And that's a problem for me. So if you're a guy and you're listening in and you're hot under the collar, I'm going to ask you something. And I'm going to ask you to challenge you to step up and start to speak out when you recognize. Because here's the deal. And I, I talked about this on one of my previous podcasts And we'll have a link to that down below in the comments where we talk about, you know, not all men, hashtag not all men. And I agree with that. But it's really hard when you start to look at some of these really big things that are happening insidiously. They're happening quietly. They're happening not so quietly, but they're happening in a way. Did you know that there are trigger laws set up right now in the U.S. where if Roe versus Wade is overturned, they will come into effect further affecting a woman's right further affecting women's rights. It doesn't matter how she got pregnant. It doesn't matter who got her pregnant, but she is going to be the one bearing the brunt of that. Her, and in some cases, the person who's providing that. In fact, you can spy on your neighbor, right? And turn them in, in Texas, I believe it's in Texas, um, so that they stop it. And I get it. I totally get it. As I said in the beginning, I actually believe that life begins at conception. So I'm arguing this from a space that says, I think this whole conversation would change if it wasn't the women who were being thrown into prison, if it was the men and the boys who were. But in all of this, the only people I see who are being protected are the men and the boys who are an active participant in making this happen, in making this be a problem. And so I'm not really sure what my call to action would be as I begin to wrap this up, except that I would really love it if today's podcast makes you think about what you believe, makes you think about how you're showing up in terms of sharing those beliefs and standing in those beliefs. And if maybe perhaps we can begin to really look at some of these issues not as the single issue, which they would prefer us to do, but rather as a larger global pandemic of abuse and continued abuse against women. And again, I haven't even, you know, jumped into the deep end about the atrocities for women in other countries. I tapped on it a little bit into Latin America, but I know in other countries where women's rights or we're fighting for women's rights, it's even worse So yes, we have to be listening and paying attention to the right of the unborn, but at the cost of the mother, at the cost, at this big cost, without any responsibility being taken by the man involved in this. And I hate to put it this bluntly, but I'm going to, there's a certain 
penetrating energy when a woman gets pregnant that's brought on by the man. And so there is a choice, I think, in all of this. And so for them to be able to make the choice, but it being the woman who bears the brunt of the punishment and the pain, I'm not sure that that's fair. So anyway, that's my two cents to the whole thing. Again, we're going to have a ton of resources and information below. So if you are someone who's listening in and you've had an abortion or you were considering an abortion and you need some resources, we're going to have access to those down below. If you've got a comment, I would totally love to hear it and welcome it. Please be listening because upcoming episodes, we're going to be talking about the Black Months. Um, and we're also going to be interviewing another woman who chose to have an abortion then changed her mind. And again, talking about the freedom and how important it is that we don't sacrifice those as we're moving into 2022. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Create the Purple podcast. I want to give a shout out to Dr. Mikolai Rajik, who is the founder and managing director of Marriage Genomics Incorporated. He has got an incredible YouTube-based program where he talks you through data as he interprets it regarding the COVID pandemic. Now, we have stayed far away on this educational podcast from weighing in on any of the pandemic itself. However, it's important for us to direct you when we discover a source that we believe to be grounded, um, who leaves their opinion on the entire thing out of it, but simply provides you with a great resource to interpret the data that, of course, is just continuing to come at you. So we've done a big shout out. We're really grateful that we, and I personally know Dr. Mick myself, and I'm really grateful that he's been taking the time to put out some incredible videos going through and dissecting the data as it's coming to you. So we're sharing a link to Marriage Genomics, their YouTube channel specifically. We'll have a link down below in the show notes. Have a look at that and go follow along for some amazing interpretation of the ongoing pandemic for your COVID safety. And thank you so much for listening. Are you looking for a simple, easy weight management solution? I thought you might be. I know I was. I also wasn't interested in something with a ton of gimmick without any science behind it, which I know a ton of companies have. The company I'm about to share with you actually has 12 of their own clinical studies. And for me, with my science-based background, I needed to know that. I also needed to know the product worked. And so I was introduced to the group that however had 125,000 members on it, all supporting amazing stories of weight management, weight loss, hair regrowth. Oh my gosh. Not surprising though, considering the product itself has won numerous awards in and out of the nutraceutical industry, which I think is pretty incredible. Pretty exciting as well is the fact that it's made with their patented technology, seven international patents on the collagen in this product, made entirely from chicken sternum. Chicken sternum, why? Because it most closely mimics the collagen that our own bodies create. Now I'm a 36 plus year old woman. And so making sure that I'm maintaining and taking care of and trying to reverse the clock so I can age gracefully is super important to me making sure I'm taking products that are safe, making sure I'm taking products that are approved and making sure I'm taking products that I would be happy to share because there's integrity at the top. So this company is a values-based company, which I absolutely love. Not only do I love that, but I love the flavors. This is mango. Mango is my favorite. This is from the Modera company, which you've heard me talk about before. One simple spoonful a day in the morning, I can add it to my coffee if I feel like it. I don't add the mango, I add the vanilla to my coffee, (laughs) but I can add a simple spoonful to my day. It tastes awesome, it tastes amazing, and it's helping my body to maintain the figure that I've worked to get to, why not? Now, if you're looking for some weight management, this is gonna help curb appetite, it's gonna help your body to function as best, and we know that when you do something like that and you make wiser choices, your body says thank you. This is part of an entire system called the lean body system. I will make sure to post information for that below, or you're welcome to scan the QR code, which I know is going to be somewhere in the screen if you're watching this on YouTube. If not, head over to modere.ca, that's M-O-D-E-R-E, modere.ca, or modere.com, and use code 55790027, again, 55790027, to save 10 bucks on your next order, regardless of what you put in your cart. 
Thanks so much.